Sir Isaac Newton. Maybe you've heard of him. He's a pretty smart guy. He states in his first law of motion that an object in motion tends to stay in motion and an object at rest tends to stay at rest. Now, this channel is not a physics lesson, so I will try not to bore you, but bear with me. Let's break this down. To get from an object at rest to an object in motion, a force has to be acted upon it. You are the object. Now, maybe you're not at rest right now. Maybe you are. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you want to be moving at a faster rate. Maybe you want to be more productive. Maybe you want to be smarter. Maybe you want to make more money. Maybe you want to get more stuff done. Whatever it may be, a force needs to be acted upon you. You need that push, or in this case, collision. I'm talking about momentum. And here's our equation. P equals mv and yay more physics this is the most important equation we have for success and while at first glance it may not seem so let me explain this formula has three variables which i will break down into an easier to understand formula p in this case stands for momentum and this is the force that is acting upon us m in physics stands for mass if you have an equal amount of momentum being applied to two objects at differing masses something that has more mass would experience less of an effect for example, let's say that you're throwing a bowling ball versus a tennis ball. They're going to have very different reactions, assuming that you're throwing them with the same amount of force. Now for the purpose of the equation for us, I don't really care about your master weight. So I'm going to change this into the resilience to our goal. Someone who is not very resilient to starting a new task would have a very low M value, and it might be quite easy to get them going. A small momentum push here goes a long way. Vice versa, if you're someone who has high resilience to starting a new task, you would have a very high M value, and it would take a much larger push to get you going. Our last variable here is velocity, which for the purpose of this video is the speed at which we get things done. This is what we are trying to increase. The purpose of this video is to get us to start moving faster so we can achieve our goals. How can we do this? If we have our equation here, momentum equals our resilience multiplied by our velocity, there are two ways to increase our velocity. The first being we have to increase our initial push of momentum. The second would be to lower our resilience to starting a new task. That way the momentum has a larger effect on us. I want to touch on both here. I'm going to start with resilience. In my last video, I talked about the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation and how if you want to reach a long-term goal, it's very important to have intrinsic motivation. The internal motivator is a lot stronger than the external motivator. Again, I have a full length video on this, so I'll put it at the top. And if you want to watch it, you can go ahead. But this is one way that we can decrease our resilience to starting something new. Another way that can affect our resilience level is a topic called decision fatigue. Decision fatigue talks about in its basic form how we make thousands of decisions every single day. And as we go throughout the day and we make more and more decisions, we are more and more likely to make poor decisions. For example, let's say throughout the day, you're trying to lose weight. You're going about your day, you're going on walks, you're eating really healthy, you're making all these smart decisions. However, as it becomes later and later in the day, you're sitting there thinking, do I really want to go to the gym today? And without even realizing it, you're less inclined to make the decision you might have made earlier in the day, the one that you know is better for you, of going to the gym and working out. Similarly, how many of you have gone the whole day eating very healthy, and then it comes nighttime, it's really late in the day, you start opening your cupboards, looking around, and you see a bag of chips, and you think to yourself, hey, I've eaten pretty healthy today. I know I probably shouldn't eat this, but why not? This is another example of decision fatigue. So what can we do about this? In a perfect world, we would be able to just delete the decision-making process entirely. When I lost over 100 pounds, I wasn't sitting there throughout the day thinking to myself, hey, do I wanna to go to the gym today? I knew that I had to go to the gym to reach my goals. It just became a part of my daily routine. Just like when you wake up in the morning, you're not thinking to yourself, do I really wanna to go to this job? You know you have bills to pay. You know you have things that need to get taken care of. At least I hope you don't. Maybe you do. In that case, you should probably find a new job. <laughs> In the nutrition example of reaching for chips, maybe instead of blindly opening your cupboards, you planned out your meals the day before. You were out what you're going to have for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and your snacks. This is also why meal prepping is so effective. This way you're deleting the decision-making process of what should I eat. The decision is already made for you. Now, these examples can be effective in lowering your resilience levels. However, what about that initial push that you want? Like many of you, I find the hardest part of doing something is the actual start of it. Actually motivating yourself to get to start doing something. An object at rest tends to stay at rest, right? You are ultimately 
a product of your environment. Jim Rohn famously said that you are a product of the five people that you spend the most time with. And while I'm not telling you to cut out your close friends and family members to achieve some goal that you have, it is something to keep in mind. The habits you build and the people you surround yourself with is what's going to eventually shape you. For example, if you're surrounded by people who are afraid of failure, they want to start a business, but they're scared to start. They want to start an exercise routine, but they're scared to start. They want to get a higher paying job, but they're afraid to leave their current job and learn a new skill. You are feeding off of their energy. You are going to be scared. Surrounding yourself with people who aren't afraid of failure, as cliche as this sounds, is what ultimately is going to lead to your excess. Ask yourself what's the worst that can happen. I promise you it's not going to be that bad. After that, start doing it. You're watching my channel, so I know that you're motivated and want to be successful. Make it happen. Let this video itself be your momentum push. Now I'm assuming you're in motion. The battle is not over. Even once you start going, you're going to have things that are trying to set you back. Just like in physics when there's gravity and air drag and friction trying to pull you back, in life there's going to be countless factors trying to stop you. Going back to my example of losing weight, you're going to have friends who constantly want to go out to eat. You're going to be haunted by your bad eating habits. You're going to be sore and unmotivated to work out. Keep in mind, momentum is on your side now and to keep going. Starting is the hardest part. You don't want to be at rest again. It takes an average of 66 days to build a habit and only a moment to ruin it. Surrounding yourself with the wrong people or making a poor decision because of decision fatigue can ruin everything that you've built up with this momentum. Anyway, I want to thank all of you for watching. My name is Nolan and I make videos on personal development and making money. If you feel inclined, please do like and subscribe. Share the video with your friends if you think they could gain anything from it. All right, peace.